Hello and what's up? Welcome to another Layer by Layer tutorial. Uh, so you should remember last week I showed you guys how I put together an Adafruit fidget spinner and we used Fusion 360 to create this um, really nice form and shape. Uh, but over the weekend I was thinking, hey, I actually want to make a more traditional spinner. Uh, so this is like the tri spinner where there's three arms and each arm has sort of uh, a bearing in the center of it. And this provides the spinner with a lot more weight, which makes it, which gives it a lot more momentum when you're spinning it. So you can actually spin this thing really, really fast. And I wanted to challenge myself and sort of make this into an exercise. And how can I create this shape in the in the least amount of steps in Fusion 360, and also make it uh, user parameter driven? So that's what we're going to do in today's tutorial. We're going to make a fidget spinner uh, and make it with the least steps and you make it user driven, user parameter driven. All right, enough spinning. So here's the shape that we have. It's a little bit more simplified than the one I showed you in the video, but this is, this is cool. So check this out. So under modify is a chains parameters window. And if you don't have this window available in modify, that's because you're not capturing history. So if you look at the bottom here, this is our timeline, which captures history of all the features that we're making. And it, if it's not showing up by default, all you got to do is right click on your main um, assembly and, and at the bottom here in the contextual menu, you'll see capture design history. Right now it says do not capture history because I'm already capturing it. So there you go. Uh, and I also fitted it up here so that I can quickly get to it. But it's under modify. And if you want to bring anything up here in the toolbar, uh, you can see these little arrows here when you hover over something. So you want uh, something there. Uh, you can click on Add to Toolbar button, and I already have it added, so bring it up. I already have uh, three user parameters made, but I'll show you how to make them too. So uh, for this example, for these three, I have the first one named Bearing Diameter, which is supposed to be the diameter of our bearing. And if I change that, it's set to 22 right now, but let's say I change it to 10, the entire design gets updated, and there's no conflictions, and everything just kind of adapts to it. I can also change the finger distance which is the distance from these two bearings. And let's say I want to change it to 20, and that updates nicely. And I also have the thickness, so I can change the thickness to something thinner, like six or whatever. But for the most part, um, we're using the 608 bearings, which has a diameter of 22. And you can see you can break things, obviously, but you just have to be aware of uh, your, uh, your, your other parameters that you have. And then we'll put this back to 10. Cool. So to make one, you just click on, uh, when you open the window, there won't be any. So you click on this plus button, and this is the add user parameter window. So you give it a name, you know, my parameter. And then you give it a unit of measurement, which can be millimeters or inches or any other of these amazing units. And then you type in a number, which, which, is, uh, which can be subject to change. And even a comment if you want. But that's, I already have them made. So that's how to make them. And then you can use this X button to delete them. And that's kind of it. So I want to show you guys how to put together the shape. So let's go ahead and sort of delete all this stuff in our timeline. Start over fresh. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to make a sketch. And the sketch should be sort of looking at from the top of, the, of our view cube. You, you can, we'll, we'll draw on it from the top. So I'll make a circle. And I'll click on this. Uh, the little patch thing so that we're drawing on the top and then I'll start from the center So make sure you start from the center if you could always make a design centered do it So I'll, I'll draw out my circle and instead of putting a value an actual number I'm gonna type in diameter and you'll see that the bearing diameter pops up so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and then so that now that is inside of the little input field and then I'll hit enter again to confirm that. And then you'll see that it, it labels it as fx22. That's basically saying it's a function and the actual value is 22. So if we open up our user parameters, you can see it's 22. And if I were to change this, you'll see that it dynamically updates that value. So awesome. OK, so now that we have our first circle made. This is, of course, going to be our cutout for our center bearing. It's for the fidget spinner. So, you need, so next, I'm going to work on the sort of arm. So I'm going to make another. Uh, another circle, and I'm gonna make it somewhere up here. Doesn't matter where, because we're gonna uh, we're gonna apply a dimension to it. But just make sure that it's on this green line, which is our y-axis. So I'll, I'll do something over here, and again, I'll type in diameter, 
There's our bearing diameter, and then hit enter to confirm that. So they're both 22 now. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to make a distance from here to here. And the way circles work is you kind of have to do it with the, the sort of central uh, point instead of the edge. So I'll select, but you can still click on the edge. So I'll click on that edge, hold down shift, and then click on this edge. Now I can hit the command, uh, the shortcut D, which is over here for sketches. It's called uh, sketch dimension, but I already have these two selected. So I'll hit D on my keyboard and instantly I get uh, the, the, little, um, the little thing here for making a sketch dimension. And it says 35, so I'm gonna click to drop it down. And instead of uh, you know adding a number, I'm gonna type in distance. And finger distance shows right up. So again, I'll just hit enter and enter again. And now you'll see that it moved up and it says it's 40 millimeters. Awesome. So that is our diff that, that is our distance. So that's pretty much it for that. The next thing we want to do is kind of create geometry that will be uh, the arm itself, right? The arm for a fidget spinner. And since these circles are going to be cutouts, we need to kind of make a, a, some sort of shape around these circles. So what I'll use is the rectangle tool, just a regular two-point rectangle. And I'll just draw somewhere over here and just kind of encompass these two. Now, they're, they're not, I didn't add any numbers. I didn't define it. So I, can, I have some de degrees of freedom here where I can move this around. So what I need to do is kind of set some sketch dimensions so that they are always uh, equal with each other. So what I'll do is I'll start with this line. And then I'll click on the center of this line. And then I'll hit D on my keyboard. And you'll see it's 16. What I want to do is actually I want to say I want the diameter, the bearing diameter. Oh, let me go back in there. Just double click on it. I want the bearing diameter. I want half of the, the bearing diameter. So I'm going to let me click in there again. I want to divide that by 2 to give me the radius. And then I want to add 4 millimeters to that. So you can multiply, or you can you can divide and add. You can do basic math using parameters, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to hit Enter. And you'll see that it says it's 15. So I'm going to double click on that and copy that whole line since it's highlighted. And I'll hit Enter. And now I can do that same thing for the edges. So I say I want this edge and that center to be that function. So again, it's the diameter of the bearing divided by 2, which gives us the radius plus four, so I hit enter. And then I can do the same thing for the other side, the right side. Paste, enter, and there we go. So essentially what we're saying is I want this line to be four millimeters away from here. So there's four millimeters of sort of clearance between this edge and our central uh, little circle. And you can see here down here where it says uh, two sketch curves, minimum distance is four millimeters because when we when we change, when we divided it by two, we're adding that four millimeters. So hopefully, that is enough to uh, to give you a sense of what we're what we're trying to achieve here. Now, now that we have uh, these, we kind of kind of got to work with this one. So instead of doing that same stuff we did up there, I'm actually going to bring this up, and you can see it's kind of it's kind of weird to to bring it up. It doesn't really want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a construction line that will define where this guy should go. So I'm going to do that by creating a line under the sketch window. And I'll click in the center. It's very important that you click in the center of your, cir of your circle. And then it doesn't matter how long the line is. As long as it's a horizontal line, it's fine. So I'll just make a line like that. I'll select it, and then I'll turn it into a construction line by going over to the sketch pal uh, palette and then clicking on that construction line button. And that'll make it a dotted line, letting us know that it is now a construction line and it doesn't intersect any of these profiles. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a constraint to constrain this guy to that line here that we just made. So to do that, I'll use something called collinear. So I'll click on collinear, click on the, the edge I want to affect, and then make it go to that edge. And right away, it jumps to it. And now we have our, our stuff set. Our, our, we have things things set in place. So now if I were to open our change parameters window and I want to change the distance to 50, this line will always get locked to the center of the circle, which is awesome. I'll bring it back down to 30, 
cool. So things are working out. And that's actually all we need to do. Now, you could draw everything in the sketch, which is fine, but I'm trying to do this in the most, the easiest amount of steps. And what I found is if, watch me double click on this uh, to kind of create, to select that whole rectangle, and then I'll select this circle. I'll use the sketch model box. I'll hit S on my keyboard to bring up the toolbox, and then I'll type in circular for circular pattern. So that brings up this little window, I'll hit enter. And I have my object selected. Now I want the center point. So I'll click on the center there and instantly it makes three copies. Of course you can change the copies you want. I want three. And you'll see that when we, when we duplicate, when we create a circular pattern, there's a bunch of these, uh, there's a bunch of these intersections. So if I were to extrude this out, I would have to click on each individual little section piece. Um, so let's not do that. Let's actually make a, a pattern uh, once it's a body. And that'll just kind of simplify things. So I hit stop sketch, click this one profile, and I'll extrude it out. And instead of putting a number, I'm gonna say thickness, because we already set one up. And I'll hit okay. So now we've extruded it. The next thing I want to do is kind of round off these corners here so that it's equal to sort of this, uh, the circle. So I can do that by just shift, holding down shift and selecting the edges that I want, which is these corners. And then I'll hit F on my keyboard for fillets. So I can apply fillet. So you can move the handle here. But instead of doing that, I'm actually just going to hit command paste to make that to use that same function that we have already in our clipboard. Again, it's bear, the diameter, the bearing diameter divided by two plus four. So hit enter. So now we got this perfect radius on on this uh, the surface. So if I if I if I click on that uh, that center edge and then uh, hold down shift and click on the outer edge, you'll see that the minimum distance is still four millimeters because we define it such. So that's awesome. So now what we got to do is just make apply a pattern on this body here. So I can do that by hold, by hitting the S key uh, to bring up the model toolbox and then I'll say circular pattern and then I'll click on that. Object is selected. Pattern type is set the body. I'll go ahead and uh, select our axis which will be the little blue guy here which is the Z axis. And instantly we get a nice little uh, preview of what the copies will look like. Obviously we can change more copies but I just want three. So I'll hit OK. And now we have our three bodies. All that's left to do is to kind of just merge these all together. So I can hold down shift to select all three of them. And then under modify, I'll hit combine. Make sure the operation is set to join and just hit OK. And that's kind of it. Now we can do some nice, you know, spice it up a bit by adding some fillets to these corners here. I'll put 10 maybe. And then I'll even do a fillet on the outsides here, maybe one millimeter. And I actually want to apply a chamfer. But instead of applying a chamfer on all of these edges here, um, I can just step all the way back before I made, before I made uh, the, the pattern. And holding down shift, select the, the edges that I want to apply a chamfer to, not a surface, but the edges. And then hit chamfer, one is good, hit enter, and then go all the way back to the front. And hey, now all, uh, all four of our circles have these nice chamfers on both edges, on both sides. Isn't that awesome? So now we can kind of mess around with our user parameters. Maybe we want the distance from the fingers to be longer. We put 40. Maybe it's not thick enough. Maybe we could put uh, 12. So it's really easy to change it now. So we used, uh, so we did a little bit of math with our, our user parameters. So that's really what I, what I want you guys to take away from this is to think about how can you uh, leverage user parameters in your designs. Um, and this doesn't have to be a fidget spinner. Maybe this is holding, maybe it's like a holder for tools, tool bits, or it holds uh, toothbrushes or something like that. So it doesn't have to be a fidget spinner. It could be really anything. So think about this uh, when you're designing your, your kind of things, your attachment, your brackets, whatever. Think about user parameters in mind and think about, um, you know, what's the least amount of work that I have to do in a sketch? Because you can do a bunch of stuff inside the sketch. You can draw this whole thing in the sketch, but it won't be as flexible. Uh, like this. So that's why um, I thought it was a, a good project to kind of exercise uh, workflows. And I think it's awesome that we don't have to add too much work here to draw something like that that has three copies and always maintains distances and things. <gasps> Another thing is to kind of know that you can 
uh, multiply, you can use your user parameters with a little bit of math, so that's always cool. And you can also multiply things together, so I could say varying diameter times finger distance, that type of stuff. So you can make this even more dynamic. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover. If you guys have any questions, obviously let me know in the comments. I always love reading your comments. And if you have um, better ideas on how to achieve this with, a, with like more efficiency or something, let me know in the comments. I would love that because it helps me out and, of course, a lot of people out too. But that's all I got for you guys today. Definitely check out using Fusion. I got a download link for you in the description. Go ahead and download that. And hit the like button if this was useful to you. Share the video. It really helps it out uh, if you share content because that's how things work. Well, that's it for me. I will see you guys in the next one.